Okay, so you've uh, bought yourself one of these new uh, Pixie 2 cameras. Okay, really cool. And maybe you've already played with the old uh, Pixie 1s at some point. And you want to go ahead and get it hooked up to a Teensy. Alright, so I've got a Teensy 3.2 here mounted onto a Patent Robotics uh, motherboard. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to set it up so we can get it going really quickly. Uh, there's a couple of things you have to do first and uh, one of them is simply get the software so if we jump over here uh, what you want to be able to do you need to go ahead and go to downloads you're going to need a couple of da downloads you might as well get them all choose the camera and the first thing you're going to need is Piximon now I've already installed it here but this is going to give you the software that you need to communicate with the camera um, directly with your computer you're also going to need to set a setting on the communications for the 3.2 so you're gonna need this piece of software right here the other thing you're probably gonna wanna have are these libraries so go ahead and download these as well um, we're gonna be modifying it slightly to get this to work but you need them on your computer it's gonna make your life a lot nicer so that being said we can come back over here um, what we wanna do is first set up the camera so that it's going to be able to talk to the TNC. So to do that, I'm going to plug it into a USB port here. And like I said, I've already got Pic Pixiemon installed on my computer. So I'm going to go ahead and open it. Okay, there you go. You can see me again. And what we want to do is we want to set a couple of... Well, we'll set the parameter we need to to work with first. So to do that, I'll have it aiming at me, which is kind of a little bit odd. Maybe I'll have it aiming down here. To do that, what we want to do is we want to, I'm sorry, click on the settings, okay? And on the TNC, we're gonna need to go to interface, and we're gonna need to make sure it's set on SPI with slave select, okay? SPI with slave select, all right? So make sure that is checked, okay? The next thing we're probably going to want to do is set up some sort of a uh, something to actually work with so we can see if it's working. So I'm going to actually use this um, green fob. Let me move these over to the side here. Actually, we are done with this. We can, well, actually, we're going to come back to it. But we'll apply and we'll say OK. So now let's get ourselves an object that we can we can focus on and do something with. So I'm just going to make one object right now, one block, one one thing to pay attention to. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to set a signature, the image freezes, and now I'm going to choose a region of it. Okay, cool. And it seems to have found everything of that color, which is really nice, and it moves around. Sometimes it breaks it into multiple blocks, okay, so they got that shadowing going on. But I think we've got it pretty much defined, which is good. Uh, the other thing which is kind of nice is to go ahead and label this. You can just leave it as S equals 1, but I think it's nice sometime to label it. So let's just call this, I don't know, uh, green. Okay, and apply. And that way we'll know what we're actually looking at. Say OK. And of course now you can see that it's found the green fob. So now we are set and we can actually do something with the Teensy. We just need to wire it up and make it go. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and close this, and let's get the Teensy out over here. We'll set this aside for a moment. I'm going to unplug the USB, and we're going to need some uh, jumper wires. I've got quite a selection of them here. I'm going to pull them off my old Pixie 1. Now, um, I've done this a couple of times, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up a piece of code where I've actually got a... Uh, cheat sheet so to speak uh, so we can see where things actually wire in there's also useful to have something like this available to you so when you are looking at the let me move this over a little bit so we can kind of see things side by side oops I did not mean to do that sorry okay a little further ah
Okay, there we go. Now we can see the pins here, okay, corresponding here, and we can find out what they are, which they're labeled as. But what's important to realize, and especially when you follow my diagram, is the numbering sequence. I go one, two, three, four, five, six, okay, across this way. So on this, it's, this is going to be pin 1, pin 2, pin 3, pin 4, pin 5, pin 6. All right. We're going to be hooking this guy up to the SPI port on the Teensy. And so we are going to be dealing predominantly with pins 1, 3. Well, we're going to have to have uh, power and ground as well, and 4. And then the other one, like I said, we had to select that uh, SS, the slave select. So we're going to be using pin 7 as well. So let's go, I'm going to minimize this. So if we look at, I have this diagram here, and I'll include this code so you can see it. I've got the pins labeled. Here's the button, okay, corresponding here, pins 1 through 10. And what we want to do is we want to wire it in such a way that, for example, pin 12 of the Teensy, so if I go down to pin 12, I'm going to plug that in there, that should then go to pin 1 on the Pixie. So that's going to go here. I'm going to pause it while I wire it. Okay. I'm going to choose a red wire, though. We'll do this power and ground thing right now. So I've got a red wire. You can see that the 5 volt on the Pixie is pin 2. So I'm going to plug it up there in the very top, like that. And then I'm going to choose to put it on any of the red bus here, because I'm going to have this thing set at 5 volts, so I'll be able to power it up. Let me pause it, finish wiring it, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've completely uh, wired it up here, and I went down this little sequence here, so pin 12 went to the uh, Pixies pin 1. I had the 5 volt supply from my Teensy going to pin 2. I've got pin 13 from the Teensy, so that one right there is going to pin 3. I've got pin 11, okay, second one from the bottom is going to pin 4. I have pin 10 is going to go to pin uh, 7, okay, which is for that, uh, that slave select. And last but not least, I have the ground, any one of these grounds, going to pin 6, okay, on the Teensy. So every, I'm sorry, on the Pixie. So everything is wired up. Now the next thing we had to do was, if you haven't done this before, you are going to need to include the library you downloaded. So you're going to add the zip file. Now I already did, so you're going to add the zip file. Now there's going to be a problem. It's actually kind of, kind of took me a while to figure this out. Add the zip file, and when you do, you're going to find you've got some really handy samples. So if I go here, and I go to examples, and I scroll down, to the Pixie 2. I'm sorry, that's off your screen. Uh, I'm going to choose Pixie 2. I want to do the CCC for the color. Oh, I forget what it stands for, but it's going to be looking for the color blocks. And uh, there's a great one that just says, Hello World. So I'm going to load CCC Hello World as my example. And you would hope that this would work great. Okay. And if I go ahead and try to upload it, it's going to fail miserably. So I probably really shouldn't even have to wait, but it just doesn't work. There's going to be errors. It's going to have all kinds of problems. So we have to correct a couple of things. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to open your library. So mine is in Documents, Arduino, Libraries, Pixie 2. Okay, when you do, you're going to get all of these things. Well, we've got problems with the uh, ARMs that uh, this Zumo buzzer thing just doesn't work. So we're going to take this and we're going to we're going to delete them all. Just get rid of them. Okay, so now they're out of the picture, and that's going to eliminate one of the big errors. The other thing is, if we go back to our example, oops, what did I do that? I closed it for some reason. Examples, Pixie 2, Hello World. Okay, so the other big thing we have to change is, remember we set it for SPI with slave select. So 
that default uh, H file is not going to work. We need to change it to pixie2spi underscore ss. Okay, so I'm just going to copy that. And this needs to change to that. Okay, now let's go ahead and load this and see what happens. Hopefully it's going to take care of all our problems. Looks good so far. This is a really simple little piece of code, and we're gonna I'm gonna show you how to get some more information out of it. This is just a test piece of code, but we're gonna build onto it, and then I'll publish it. I suppose I should have paused it. I'm gonna pause it until it finishes. Okay, so it's done. We're running their CCC Hello World test example. We've switched this over. Now we'll open up the serial port and see what we get and we don't have anything yet that's not a surprise the camera's aiming down and look lo and behold when I show up the block we start getting a stream of data out of it okay so now the next thing you're probably going to want to be able to do is sort of manipulate this data get the values that you want the variables that you want uh, so you can actually do something with it so let me set this aside here um, I'm going to set this aside I say no Move this over. Sorry. Okay. Let me find it over. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken that exact piece of code, that exact sample, and I've just added some additional information to it. Um, so I've added this uh, uh, wiring diagram so you can have that, so you can hook it up to your TNC. Of course, you can see these changes are happened here where I've got the slave select H file going. Now this was actually right up to here was right out of that exact same file, but I've added some additional stuff because I want you to see where the individual variables are, are grabbed. So in this particular case, I'm going to have this thing printing lots of information. These, this would be the protocol that you would use to gather a variable of any one particular thing. So if you're looking, for example, for position X or in position in Y or its width or its height, you're going to want to go ahead and call this right here this pixie cc blocks i okay uh, m underscore height and that's going to give you that information so i could set that equal to a variable if i wanted to in this case i'm just going to print it so you're going to see it print out the whole thing and then you're going to see that it actually prints out the uh, individual bits uh, that you can use for your data so i'm going to load this up i'm going to pause it while it loads Okay, so I've loaded it up. I'm going to push this over to the side so we can see the whole thing. And, of course, the camera is facing down so it doesn't see anything. But if I take my green object here, you can see that it starts actually detecting the uh, object. And then you have, let me see if I can set this down. Sort of like this. I have it looking at my object. Okay. So this line right here corresponds to this line of code here. So we're getting the entire uh, thing out. And then what I have going on is individual uh, functions being called so that, for example, x and y are going to be these two values right here. And I could set those equal to a variable and manipulate them any way that I wanted to. And you can see as I move it around, it's position relative. I, to the camera so if I go this way you can see the position relative to the camera shifts around so you could use this for tracking an object or whatever you want also you can see that the width changes so I could determine how far away an object is all right so that's about all the time I have I'm gonna re you know the uh, last little bits again the big changes is you gotta set the camera to this all right in its settings you have to um, add this .h file so it'll actually communicate. And you have to delete all of those other annoying files in the library that seem to interfere with this uh, Teensy ARM. So, hope that was helpful, and I'll talk to you again soon.